Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tanika and in today's video I am going to be finally reviewing the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Foundation. There are so many options for fair skin tones in this range, so I am really excited to share my thoughts with you. So if you want to hear what I think, see some swatch comparisons and watch a demo, then give this video a thumbs up and stay tuned. Starting off with some facts, this foundation comes in 45 different shades. It's a little confusing here in Australia though, because on the NYX Australia website, it shows 45 shades, but you can't shop through that website. It leads you to other sites such as Priceline. So then you go onto the Priceline website and they only have 24 shades available on the site. So the shade that I originally wanted, I couldn't end up picking up online. So instead I went with two different ones. I got the shade Pale, described for white ivory with yellow undertones, and the shade Porcelain, described for porcelain with neutral undertones. There are actually three more shades in between these two, but as I said, I couldn't get them online and I haven't been into store to check if they actually have them in stock on the shelves. When I do though, I will definitely keep you updated in the description box down below. The foundation comes in a glass bottle with a pump. It has 30 mils of product and it retails for $29.95. For reference, I have combination skin. I get a little oily throughout my T-zone and I do get breakouts, which can sometimes be quite dry. So out of the two shades, I found that porcelain is a better match for me. Pale is just a bit too light, but it does make a great mixing shade. As I mentioned, the shade I wanted, I couldn't get, and that is light porcelain. It is more fair than porcelain, but it also has a neutral undertone. The foundation has a matte finish. It's not super drying, but it's definitely matte. So if you have dry skin, I would not recommend this foundation for you. At times, it can look a little dry on me, but to combat this, I just make sure my skin is super hydrated and I actually use, are you ready for this? I use a sponge to apply it. I know, she's not using a kabuki brush for once. I found that using a kabuki brush, which I always do, just made the foundation look really patchy and it didn't blend nicely onto the skin. Using a sponge, I do have to use around four pumps of product, but it leaves a really nice, smooth, seamless finish, and my skin still looks hydrated. If you wanted a lighter coverage, of course, you wouldn't have to use as much, but I'm all about that full coverage life, and this foundation builds really well without going cakey. Also, even though it's a thicker formula, it feels really lightweight on the skin, which I love. For longevity, I give this foundation a huge thumbs up. I get a good 8 to 10 hours wear from this and it still looks great at the end of the day. I find that it keeps that bit of oil that I do get throughout the day at bay and it doesn't come off when I sweat. It has been so hot here in Queensland lately and the humidity is through the roof and I get a really, really bad sweat mustache. I swear that is like the only place my sweat wants to come out. Well, it's the first place my sweat wants to come out. And so when I'm at work, I'm usually like dabbing there and my foundation rubs off and it's not a good look, but not with this foundation. It actually stays in place as long as I am dabbing it lightly with the tissue and not full on rubbing, it doesn't come off. As for primers, I haven't really experimented with them that much. I kind of just put the foundation on my skin over the top of moisturizer. But if I am going to use a primer, I usually go for a redness reducing one anyway. So sorry, I don't have a lot of information for you regarding that category. Overall though, I agree with the claims of this foundation that it is full coverage, it's lightweight, it controls shine and it stays matte. I really enjoy this foundation and if you have oily to combination skin, I think that you really will too. All right, let's move on to some swatches and a demo. I hope I covered everything just then. If not, leave me your questions down below. Okay, so here we have the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop in the shade Pale and this is in the shade Porcelain. So as you can see, there is quite a big jump between the two, which is why I would really like to try the shade Light Porcelain. This here is the Maybelline Superstay in the shade 110 Porcelain. <laughs> and jumping back to NYX, this is the Total Control Drop Foundation in Porcelain. Here we have the Fenty Beauty in shade 100. This here is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define in F1. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in 110 and the Fit Me Matte and Poreless in 102. 
Before I apply the foundation, I'm going to go in with a primer. I want something that the I want something that is going to help counteract my redness and also give me some hydration. So today I'm going in with the Rimmel Insta CC Primer. This just very lightly dulls the redness. My skin isn't too bad today, so this will be perfect. And then just to cover up some of these bigger blemishes, I'm going to be using my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. So I'm just going to use the shade Porcelain so that you can see what it looks like on my skin tone. I do usually like to mix in just one drop of the shade Pale, but I'll just use the one shade today so you can see what it looks like. So I've put two pumps onto a little palette here, and I'm just going to use a concealer brush to spread this around my face. And as I said earlier, I like to use a sponge. It keeps the foundation looking nice and even and not patchy. And it doesn't take away too much of the coverage. Also, this is not a beauty blender. This is a sponge by EcoTools. <laughs> Look at me, not using brushes, using different sponges. This one is a lot more dense than the beauty blender, but I'm really liking it. All right, I'm going to quickly start blending. This foundation does dry kind of quick, so you don't want to leave it sitting on your face for too long. Another thing I love about using the sponge is that even though it's a matte foundation, I find that it helps for the foundation not to cling to any dry patches or pimples. Whereas if I used the brush, it really clings to those areas. Then I'm just going to take whatever's left on the palette and just scrape that up with my sponge and go over areas where I'd like a little bit more coverage. All right, so here is a close up of what the foundation looks like. Next, I go in with my under eye concealer and then I do use setting powder, but I just go in with a really light hand. And this is what the foundation looks like with my face complete. All right, well that is all for today's video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed and if you've tried this foundation, let me know what your thoughts are down below. You can come follow me over on Instagram. I will have my page linked down below. I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.